Hi and a very good evening to all of you. Welcome back to our daily current affairs session for today. So before we start, before we start with our MCQs, let me all wish you a very happy Civil Services Day to all of you. Saluting work the spirit of civil service officers in India. All right. So today is the Civil Service Day, the National Civil Service Day. and the logo the motto of indian civil services the motto of indian civil services is yoga karmasu kaushalam ya yeah, yoga karmasu kaushalam means excellence in action right so this should be your motto as well right every service every service done with sincerity honesty hard work and a little bit of extra effort and fight on your part is a service well done all right and not only civil service but everyone even in your day to day life this should be a motto right in your preparation journey even when you become an rbi rbi grade b officer you should focus on excellence you should also focus on progress right there is a debate going on many people debate about progress versus perfection maybe we'll dive deep into it sometime else but this is a very very beautiful motto right if we apply even 50% of this principle in our daily lives everything will be sorted out all right there should no be no stone unturned on your part right do best at your level first instead of controlling your environment right apne aas paas ke logo ko obstructions ko challenges ko control karne ki koshish to aap kabhi mat kariye first first control yourself first focus on yourself first work on yourself right first focus on your own perfection and then move on in life all right so this was a very important day beautiful motto very very inspiring okay so do have a look at our rbi grade b crash course if you want to inculcate that perfection in your daily practice okay and also download our google play store app which is a one stop solution for all the study materials and previous year question papers that you may require for your exam right you don't need to waste your time in you know google search and all of that everything is available here you just have to download it theek hai aur ek baat aur bahut important as always i tell you is wale session ka bhi jo pdf hai इस पावर पॉइंट पी का जो पीपीटी है दैट विल बी शेयर्ड इन आर टेलीग्राम चैनल डेली 9 पी एम डेली करेंट अफेयर सेशन एट 9 पी एम वी शेयर द यूट्यूब लिंक ऑल्सो इन आर टेलीग्राम चैनल द पी डी एफ विल ऑल्सो बी शेयर ओके सो डू कीप अ वॉच डू कीप अ वॉच डाउनलोड इट रिवाइज इट गो थ्रू इट राइट so and also all our enrolled students all our enrolled students will be getting a more comprehensive set of current affairs that is prepared by neha ma'am right which is very very good so do have a look at that also the spotlight is also available on our app theek okay? hai so let's start with the very first question ajay kumar sood has been appointed as the principal scientific advisor to the government of india he has been appointed as the principal scientific advisor to the government of india he replaces vijay raghavan frs who was the preceding principal scientific advisor right the office of psa ke jo director previous director was vijay raghavan frs right mr ajay kumar sood has succeeded him to become the principal scientific advisor he is a distinguished professor of what subject at indian institute of science in bangalore indian institute of science is a very very renowned institute right it is a public deemed research university for higher education right especially in engineering and science ye 1909 1909 mein iis establish hua tha right it was established in the year 1909 with the help of Mr. Jamshed Ji Tata, right? And uh, it is also known as Tata Institute. Okay, so he was a renowned professor. He was a renowned professor of what subject? You have options: physics, chemistry, maths, metallurgy, and atomic science. The correct answer here is physics. He is a renowned professor of physics. right at indian institute of science bangalore 
He is also a member of Science, Technology and Innovation at PM Advisory Council. PM's Advisory Council also operates PM's TIAC. That is, P, that is PM's TIAC is actually an overarching council. It monitors some nine mega projects that are related to advancement of science and technology in our country. All right. It also assesses the status of the current scientific and technological advancements that are, you know, being done in our country at present. Okay. It, he is very well known for his work in graphene. Graphene kya hota hai? A hexagonal formation of carbon atom. It is a hexagonal formation of carbon atom. You all understand what an hexagon is? One, two, three, four, five, six, right. It is roughly, roughly a formation hota hai, right, of carbon particles which makes it stronger than diamond, multifold more strength than diamond, very, very highly conductive to electricity. It is an industrially bahut, bahut important material hai graphene. Iske baare mein kaafi saari cheeze bhi humko pata chali hai, you know, like very good conductivity, very strong, you know, stronger than diamond, very lightweight at the same time. All these properties of graphene makes it very, very versatile in many industrial sectors, right? Be it energy, transport, defense, electronics, all right? So, drug, discovery and work in graphene also has a lot of potential in India for the advancement of science and technology as well as industry in India. Okay, so this makes it very, very important. You should associate, you should now associate graphene with Professor Ajay Kumar Sood, right? Professor Ajay Kumar Sood, who is a professor of physics, renowned professor of physics at Indian Institute of Bangalore. Okay, he has now been appointed to the office of uh, Prime Minister's scientific advisor. Okay, so all these connectives, they help you remember. So, where was Global Ayush Investment Innovation Summit 2022? Global Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit 2022 kaha pe organized kiya gaya tha? Where was it organized? You have options Surat, Gandhinagar, Kolkata, Bangalore and Hyderabad. So, is the related ek bahut important news kya hai? WHO ne Global uh, Center for Traditional Medicine inaugurate kiya hai. WHO in partnership with the government of India has inaugurated a global center on traditional medicine in the district of Jamnagar, Gujarat. All right. Jamnagar district, Gujarat, may global center for traditional medicine has been inaugurated by the WHO. Usi se related, usi se related ye global Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit conduct kara hai gaya hai for the year 2022, right? Basically, what does this imply? This implies globalization of Ayurveda. Of Ayurveda or, you know, on a broader level, on a broader level, Ayush ministry se related, jitti bhi traditional medicine schools hai, Ayurved, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha, Naturopathy, in sab ka globalization. Why? Because even today, 70% of the people rely heavily on traditional medicine, right? Even during COVID ke time pe bhi aapne dekha hoga kitne saare logo ne traditional medicine ko use kiya tha. So this is Global Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit kaha pe organize kiya gaya hai? Please answer the question correctly. The correct answer here is Gandhi Nagar. Gandhi Nagar mein ye summit organize kiya gaya hai. Let us look more into it. Let us look more into it. Global Ayush Investment has been organized in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. It, India aims to become global Ayush destination and rightfully so, global Ayush destination. Basically, what does this imply? Medical tourism. India is one of the biggest destination for medical tourism, whether it comes to Ayurveda, whether it comes to uh, yoga or whether it even comes to allopathic and hospitalization and even major surgeries. Uh, you know, pichle kuch saalo mein aapne news mein dekha hoga. So many people from across the world come to India to get major heart 
open heart surgeries right liver transplants all these uh, you know portray india as a major hub for medical tourism right so isi ko extend karte hue india also aims to you know uh, win win the global ayush destination right win the title of a global ayush destination okay it has allowed private visas to foreign travelers for ayush therapy it has allowed to provide visas to foreign travelers for ayush therapy as a you know promotive promotive measure right as a measure to promote it so let's also talk a little bit about the global uh, center for uh, you know traditional medicine global center for traditional medicine has been set up between it is actually been jointly set up by the world health organization and uh, the government of india at an investment of us 250 million dollars in the district of jamnagar gujarat right who ke chief kon hai miss dr tredros adhonam right dr let's just call him dr tredros right ag right you guys figure out how to pronounce the full name right i'll call him dr tredros he is the first first african to be appointed as the chief of who and he came to gujarat there was a meet between our prime minister arin modi ji and dr tredos you all must have seen the news how he addressed the audience in gujarati came cho majama okay and he also got the name he also got a gujarati name mr dr tulsi bhai by our prime minister okay so this makes him dr tredos ag or doc, dr tulsi bhai you can remember you can you know make some connective you know to just remember his name okay he visited gujarat to inaugurate the global center for traditional medicine okay and he is the first african uh, to be appointed as the chief of world health organization <clears throat> so we have here where will california based billiti electronic inc set up the world's largest electric three wheeler plant okay so california based ek organization hai billiti electric inc it has set up world's largest electric three wheeler plant electric vehicle three wheeler plant right electric three wheeler means three wheeler electric vehicle plant sabse bada kaun se state mein establish kiya hua hai by the german uh, by the california based billitri electric inc it has been set up in the state of telangana let's have a look at the details right it has been set up in the state of telangana and its target is to produce around 2.4 lakh electric vehicles in one year it it targets to produce 2.4 lakh electric electric vehicles in one year right and billiti electronic head uh, uh, electrics ke indian head the indian head of billiti electronics is uh, mr rahul gayam right mr <clears throat> okay so mr rahul gayam who runs gayam electro gaya motors right gaya motors limited right so billiti electric hill and gaya motor limited ka ek collaboration hua hai jiski wajah se ye electric vehicles they will be manufactured in india in the state of telangana okay with the target of 2.4 lakh electric vehicles a year all right so this was it to it moving on to the next question we have which state has announced to celebrate kuwar singh jayanti on april 23 kuwar singh jayanti kaun se state ne announce kiya hai kuwar singh if you all must have must be a little bit must be having a small amount of knowledge regarding the national movement right 1857 ki jo mutiny hui thi the first war of independence right the first war of independence you all know you all should know that um, kumar singh kahan ko belong karte the right the options are very very close right the options are very good and very close it's it is a tricky question but presently 
बिहार ने कुंवर सिंह जयंती अनाउंस किया है प्रेजेंट डे भोजपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बिहार को बिलोंग करते थे वीर कुंवर सिंह राइट लेट्स हैव अ लुक अबाउट लेट्स नो मोर अबाउट हिम राइट दिस इज अ कैटलॉग दिस इज एन इंफोग्राफिक बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर्स सो एट द एज ऑफ एट्टी इयर्स ओल्ड एट वेन ही वॉज एट्टी ही लेट द Rebellion. He was one of the chief organization of the first war of independence, right? From Bihar, he led the Indian rebellion. He was an expert and guru in guerrilla warfare, right? Recognition of his contribution to India's freedom movement. So let's talk a little about the eighteen fifty seven mutiny. So basically, what happened? Many small issues, right? They culminated into a big. big major rebellion one of the first wars of indian independence there were many leaders from various uh, regions right from kanpur from lucknow from bihar and even some parts of maharashtra they all marched they all marched with their regiment towards delhi right towards delhi to compel the then mughal emperor bahadur shah zafar to renounce the british rule right to declare autonomy over the region it was a full fledged rebellion against the british regime okay so har region se har region se ek bahut popular uh, leader hai right tantiya top you have uh, from kanpur okay and you should learn more about it you should read more about it you will remember it it is very very interesting it is very inspiring it will add on to your knowledge okay maybe we will discuss about it in some other slide or class okay moving on to the next question we have which has india's first 99.99 pure green hydrogen plant being commission इंडिया का फर्स्ट 99.99 प्योर ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन प्लांट कहाँ पे कमीशन हुआ है जल्दी से आंसर करके बताइए यू हैव ऑप्शन राजस्थान असम वेस्ट बंगाल ओडिशा छत्तीसगढ़ वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन आर प्रीवियस सेशंस ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन का इम्प्लीकेशन क्या होता है राइट हाइड्रोजन इज ऑब्वियसली यू ऑल नो आप सबने साइंस में पढ़ा ही होगा हाइड्रोजन इलेक्ट्रोलिस के प्रोसेस से प्रोड्यूस किया जाता है राइट देर इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ electrolysis there is a cathode and then there is an anion and it requires electricity to produce hydrogen okay on a on a surface level it requires electricity to produce hydrogen by the electrolysis of water theek hai ab wo electricity kaise generate ho rahi hai whether it is being generated using renewable resources whether it is being generated using conventional resources or natural gas to उस बेसिस पे हाइड्रोजन एनर्जी के अलग अलग नोमिन है राइट इफ इट इज सेइंग ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन देन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मींस दैट द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बीइंग यूज्ड फॉर इलेक्ट्रोलिस इज सोलर पावर विंड पावर हाइड्रो पावर ऑल द रेन्यूएबल सोर्सेस राइट इफ कन्वेंशनल सोर्सेज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटीज आर बींग यूज टू प्रोड्यूस हाइड्रोजन देन इट इज नोन एज ब्राउन हाइड्रोजन इफ नेचुरल गैस इज बींग यूज टू प्रोड्यूस हाइड्रोजन देन इट इज नोन एज ग्रे हाइड्रोजन बट अगर वो नेचुरल गैस के एमिशंस को कैप्चर कर लिया जाता है ग्रीन हाउस एंड कार्बन एमिशंस को कैप्चर कर लिया जाता है एंड देन हाइड्रोजन इज प्रोड्यूस देन इट बिकम्स ब्लू हाइड्रोजन सो दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू नो यू शुड नो राइट बिकॉज यू आर रीडिंग अबाउट इट यू डेफिनेटली शुड नो एटलीस्ट ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन क्या होता है राइट इग्नोरेंस इज नॉट अ ब्लिस राइट इग्नोरेंस is not even considered of an excuse ignorance is never an excuse so answer the correct question uh, uh, mark the correct option first the correct answer here is assam assam mein india ka pehla green hydrogen plant has been commissioned by oil india limited oil india limited ke chairman and md chairman and md of Mr Oil India Limited Mr Sushil Chandra Mishra has inaugurated this plant inaugurated this green hydrogen plant right so it, it is being it aims to produce 10 kg of hydrogen in one day right jorhat pump station jorhat pump station in assam will help 
in the manufacture of this hydrogen. All right. So we have Jorhat pump station as Assam will help in manufacture of this hydrogen. So it may be pehli bar anion exchange membrane will be used. Anion exchange membrane will be used to, you know, um, bank upon the solar energy plant that is situated nearby this Jorhat pump station. Solar energy ki power ko use kiya jayega using the anion exchange membrane, right, to produce green hydrogen, right. So why am I telling you this? Why am I telling you about this AEM technology? AEM technology is for the first time being used in a plant in India. For the very first time, this technology is being used in a plant in India. So that is why it becomes important. Okay, it can be probably asked in the exam. So it is important. You should know about it. You should not know the details about how anion exchange membrane will work. No, you should know first time Jorhat pump station may green hydrogen kaise produce kiya gaya using the solar energy from a nearby solar park using AEM technology which is being first time being used in India. All right. So moving on to the next question, we have where was the eighth edition of national level pollution response exercise NAT Polrex conducted by the Indian Coast Guard. Indian Coast Guard ek NAT Polrex exercise conduct karwata hai, right? To check the pollution level, especially marine pollution se concerned hai ye exercise, okay? And it is asking you where is the eighth edition has been conducted. So the correct answer here is eighth edition is being constructed conducted in Marmugao post in uh, Marmugao port in Goa, right? Marmugao port in Goa, national level pollution response exercise, right? Basically, objective kya hai is exercise ka? to compact oil spills. To combat oil spills is being conducted by Indian Coast Guard of the Marmugao Harbour in Goa to enhance the preparedness and response capabilities right of all the stakeholders in combat combating oil spills in marine ecosystem okay marine ecosystem mein oil spill ko combat karne ke liye exercise kiya gaya hai and also it also contains guidelines related to national oil spill disaster contingency plan right hamari country mein oil spill ke liye jo policy work jo policy framework strategy jo use kari gai hai that is national national oil spill national oil spill disaster contingency plan right disaster contingency plan is being used to contain and control oil spills in our country right especially coastlines which oil spills ho jata hai they damage our mangroves, right? They damage our coral reef ecosystem. They also affect the livelihood of fishermen, right? Uh, many fishermen entirely depend on the fisheries and stock uh, off offshore. So oil spill is a grave threat, major threat. It keeps happening every now and then. That is why Nalpo Trex exercise is mainly concerned, largely concerned with money, marine pollution, mostly oil spills. So let's have a look at the participants. Many countries participated in the uh, program, right? Many international organizations, Coast Guard ships from Sri Lanka and Bangladesh also participated in the program. Additional facts up here, John Liji, that India is also a member of South Asia Cooperative Environment Program. Ye ek intergovernmental organization. Ye yaad rakhega whenever you study about. Uh, International organizations always, always note down whether it is an intergovernment organization, whether it is a non-profit organization. Ye sare facts yaad rakhne kabhi kabhi zaruri hota hai. So this, as the name also suggests, it is an intergovernment organization, right? The member of this organization are Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. That is all of your SARC members. Okay, so I hope the slide was clear to you all. 
Moving on to the next question, we have which country has developed Hello Payment system? It was just recently in news. Which country has developed Hello Payment system? So the Hello Payment system was developed by Russia. The Hello Payment system was developed by Russia. We have reached today 55th day of Russia Ukraine crisis, and it does not seem to recede. It does not seem to slow down or go back or reverse. इस क्राइसिस को ही हैंडल करने के लिए हेलो पेमेंट सिस्टम इंट्रोड्यूस किया है रशिया ने विच इज अट ऑफ पेमेंट सर्विस एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट फेसिलिटेट्स मनी ट्रांसफर ट्रांजेक्शन राइट इट फेसिलिटेट्स मनी ट्रांसफर ट्रांजेक्शन एंड ऑल्सो रिसेंटली द सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ रशिया ऑल्सो डिक्लेयर दैट द सेल ऑफ फॉरन करेंसी हैज ऑल्सो बीन स्टॉप्ड इन रशिया टू you know maintain countries reserves for an exchange reserves why because also there is a lot of international sanctions on trade with russia so there is a major threat to its economy right it can get into a crisis due to the declining foreign exchange reserve but that will also take a long time let's see what confusion do we reach right so hello payment system will be operated by trans capital bank which is the com a commercial bank of uh, russia that that is being uh, stakeholders ya fir joint op it is jointly operated by ebrd right ebrd is a very famous and an important bank india mein bahut sare investments hai by ebrd you should have a look into it okay german investment cooperation deg and international finance corporation international finance corporation kaun si organization ko belong karta hai write it down in the comments below international organized finance corporation belonging to the world bank group all these are the stakeholders of trans capital bank okay so this will operate the hello payment system hello payment system basically international transactions and remittances and payment services ko facilitate karne ke liye banaya gaya how much stake has hdfc limited sold in hdfc capital advisors limited to abu dhabi right hdfc capital advisor limited to abu dhabi how much stake has been sold to abu dhabi investment authority of india koi private nahi but abu dhabi ki sovereign investment authority hai jo ki abu dhabi ke foreign exchange reserves and surplus exchange reserves ko usually manage karta hai right and hdfc ne abhi apna stake isko सेल किया है दैट इज एच डी एफ सी कैपिटल एडवाइजर्स हैव सोल्ड सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ स्टेक टू ए डी ए आई राइट सो वॉट इज दैट परसेंटेज दैट करेक्ट परसेंटेज इज ए दैट इज टेन परसेंट ओके टेन परसेंट स्टेक वर्थ रुपीज वन एट्टी फोर करोर हैज बीन सोल्ड टू आबू धाबी इन्वेस्टमेंट अथॉरिटी Abu Dhabi Investment Authority was one of the first investors one of the first investors in National Infra Investment Fund National Infra Investment Fund mein Abu Dhabi ne sabse pehle invest kiya tha in the year 2017 worth 1 billion dollar right so this is also very important related news related to Abu Dhabi Investment Authority How is the total strength of SEBI's alert committee? SEBI की alert committee की total strength क्या है? Alert committee was basically launched by the SEBI. Uh, you know, a future roadmap to you know improve ongoing technology operations when it came comes to financial market of India. All right. So financial market से related सारे regulations हैं. uh the sebi's total strength of alert committee is 7 advisory committee for leveraging regulatory and technology solution which was formed in december 2021 iske chair hai mr sunil bajpai priorly it was chaired by our present sebi chairperson madhavi puri butch right Now, alerts committee के chair है Mr. Sunil Bajpai, who is also the principal advisor at the Tra Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, and the total strength of the committee, which was the question it asks, was seven, right? <coughs> 
Okay, so moving on to the next question. Moving on to the next question, what do we have? What is the minimum paid up equity share capital requirement for Nidhi company as per the Nidhi rules 2014? So Nidhi rules 2014, RBI ne change kiye the. Nidhi company basically gets itself registered under both the Reserve Bank of India as well as the Companies Act 2013. And Nidhi company basically kya karwata hai? It, uh, basically jitte bhi lending and depositing mechanisms hote hai, it happens only among its amongst its shareholders it is a closed company and you know many times rbi has warned people against investing in these nidhi companies and it has also changed its rule <coughs> right the aim of basic aim of nidhi company is to cultivate the saving habit cultivate the nature saving script culture among people basically among its members so it Mutual fund nahi kahenge hume se, but somewhat like a mutual fund, right? People invest, people deposit their extra earnings in the Nidhi fund and then they can borrow or withdraw their deposit wherever they want. And the Nidhi fund basically only allows this deposition, lending and withdrawal only among its members, like people who come together and form such Nidhi fund. All right. So, ye Nidhi work con regulate karta hai, Ministry of Corporate Affairs regulates it. Now, before moving on to more details, answer the question correctly first. Minimum paid up equity capital kya hai? As per the new regulations that were issued in 2014, the correct answer here is 5 lakh is the minimum equity paid up capital for Nidhi fund. Right? 5 lakh is the uh, minimum paid up equity capital for Nidhi fund. It was registered under Companies Act 2013. It is similar to a non-banking finance company, but deposit and lending sirk apne members ke abang hi ye karta hai. Right? It is not a proper mutual fund company, but it is a mutual benefit company. Yeah, zyada tar, zyada tar nidhi funds, uh, mostly South India mein zyada popular hai. Right? These are mutual benefit society and the principal source of the fund is contribution from its members and shareholders. Okay, so it regulate RBI karta hai, Ministry of Corporate Affairs karta hai and it register kaha kya jata hai in RBI as well as the Companies Act 2013. Alright, so this was it for Nidhi Fund. This mein kuch bahut zyada complicated ya details mein jane ki zarurat nahi hai. These are some technicalities that you need to know that new amendments to introduce gie gai hai, that is prior declaration is required uh, for an aspiring entity to work as a Nidhi company. Okay, so the form hai, declaration form hai, that is NDH4 form, 45 days ke andar andar government ka approval milna zaruri hai and if it is delayed beyond the approval is deemed to be granted. Southern states like Tamil Nadu mein Nidhi companies zyada popular hai, we have already discussed. Okay. So this was it for today. Thank you so much for watching today's session. I hope you all have a great evening. Study well. Revise by this time. By this time you will watch these daily current affairs. Ye time aapko invest karna chahiye kis mein? Revision mein. You should revise everything you have done for the day. And also plan ahead. Plan one day ahead for the next day. Aapke next day ke jo bhi targets hai, uska pehle se ek blueprint or plan bana lije so that you are not confused ki aaj mein kya karo. Right? At least you should have a set target in mind for each and every single day. Mind you, less than 45 days are left and not a single day deserves to be wasted. Right? Excellence in action that we discussed in our very first slide should be your motto for daily preparation. Okay? Thank you so much for watching today's video. Take care. Stay healthy and fine. Study well. Jai Hind.